Hey guys, I'm back. Today I wanted to start doing the second part of my series, Preparing for Winter Photography. In the first part of the series, we went over how to protect your gear, how to make sure that your gear is safe, not only before you leave the house, as you're leaving, while you're out in the field, and then when you get back home. So today what I want to do is I want to go over part two, which is preparing yourself. You wake up in the morning, you see a fresh pack of snow outside, and you're all excited, you're ready to go, and then all of a sudden it hits you. Crap what do I wear? So it gives you an opportunity to stop and think, hmm, there's maybe a few things I need to think about. When I think about going out into winter photography, I think of this or this. And honestly, mm, neither one sounds like a good option. So here's some things that you can do and the way that you dress for winter photography. The first thing about dressing for winter photography is dressing in layers. Layers allow you to either add a piece of clothing or take away a piece of clothing based on the temperature, the climate, and your environment. If you're out and it's too warm, most photographers will go out early in the morning and they'll catch that first glimpse of the sunrise on that beautiful snowpack and all those colors and the snow just glistens. I sound like a freaking Christmas carol now. It's just absolutely beautiful in the morning. And they've all got their layers on. By the time noon, one o'clock hits, and it's time for lunch, the sun is up, you're roasting. It allows you to take off layers so that you'd be more comfortable. You don't want to get too hot, nor do you want to get too cold while you're out. So dressing in layers is the number one thing. Pardon my laptop here. I have a lot of information, so I want to make sure I'm giving you guys everything. So I will be looking over here every now and then. I'm not ignoring you. <laughs> The first thing is there's three layers to dressing for winter photography or for winter in general. It doesn't even have to be photography. This goes for every winter activity. There's the base layer, which is your thermal underwear layer or what they call your underwear layer. I sound like Dr. Eagle. Then there is your mid layer or your insulating layer. And then you have your outer layer or your shell. And each layer has their own properties their own specific types of clothing and their own purpose. So our first layer is our base layer, which is our underwear layer. And when I say underwear layer, I literally mean the underwear layer. This is what's against our skin as our first layer, and that includes your underwear, and for ladies, that includes your bra. You want it to be a material that will take any moisture or precipitation you have on your skin and wick it away. Synthetic materials help with that, but also there are a lot of natural fibers that help with that. And the two that people normally go for for natural fiber is either silk or wool. Silk can be very expensive and hard to find in the United States. And it's also making sure because there are no stores here in the U.S. that I know of that actually carry silk underwear. And if you do, you have to be there to try it on. That's hard to find. Secondly, it's just not cost effective. <laughs> it seriously is not cost effective. The second one is wool, and when everybody thinks of wool, they think of great grandma's blankets or the scarves that she would knit or any of that kind of stuff to where if you put it against your skin, you itch like crazy and you break out in a rash. That's not the type of wool I'm talking about. Morena wool is what I'm talking about, and morena wool comes from an ancient breed of sheep that live in the New Zealand and Australia Alps in the highlands, and they deal with multitudes of different types of temperatures and environments, and over time, their wool has changed so that the microfibers and the microns in their wool and in their felt is um, very soft and pliable and it's not scratchy at all and it actually is an extremely well 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 wicking material the other benefits of it is it's odor free it's bacterial static and what i mean by that is is when you wash morena wool there's a particular component inside the fleece that actually releases these components or compounds that attach to any odor and get rid of it. So you have no odor in Morena wool. It's very pure and very sought after product and it can be very expensive. I found Morena wool long johns online for three and four hundred dollars and that's outrageous. <laughs> I can't afford that. So you know if you're going to the Arctic or you're going to Iceland or anywhere where it's going to get very, very cold, yeah, drop that kind of money because that stuff will protect you. But in the environment that I'm in, 
where it's the lowest temperature we've ever gotten here is minus 20, then, you know, right now it's 50 degrees outside. <laughs> I don't need a heavyweight Mirena, Mirena underwear. The other thing that you can use is synthetic blends, and there are so many of them. The most popular synthetic that you can use is um, polyester, rayon, microfibers, spandex, combinations of any of those, polypropylene. There are several, but they have to be wicking, and they have to have the ability to breathe. They must be breathable. And whether you what, what you choose depends on what environment you're going to and where you're going to be because for any type of thermal underwear, whether it's any of these things, you have to choose one that's appropriate of where you're going and what activity you're going to be doing. There are three weights to thermal underwear. There's a light, a mid or mild weight, and a heavy weight. Pardon my laptop, I have a lot of material that I want to let you guys know about, so I'm making sure I'm telling you everything. And um, the heavy weight is also what they call an expedition weight. Those are extremely heavy pile, but they're breathable and they're wicking. Like I said, don't use cotton, cotton blend or denim. We've covered that. Just be very careful what you put on that layer. Now the layer that I use is this. This is by a company called Heat Light. And um, I purchased this at Walmart. And the reason I chose Walmart was because Heat Light is actually a very good product. It is acrylic, polyester, and spandex. I've used this for two, three years now. Love, love, love these. They're very warm. I'm dry. They wick the moisture right off of me. I have no problems with like sweating odor or anything like that. And they're a very lightweight. I chose the light version. There's different weights, the three weights they have. Um, but it's a very lightweight version. But I'm telling you, this keeps me very, very warm. And this is what I choose for my base layer. I, like I said, I can't do strange or straight wool. I break out, but I can do synthetics. So this is what I choose for mine. Now the second layer that we're gonna go over is what's called your insulating layer. And what this does is when you have your base layer and all of that moisture and precipitation is coming off of your base layer, it's going into your second layer. Your second layer has to have two properties. It has to be able to wick that moisture off into your outer layer and it has to be insulating. And there are a couple of products on the market and a couple of fibers on the market that really help with that because what it does is it uses your own body heat to keep you warm. It holds that in. So the synthetics that you can choose for that generally are um, nylon or fleece, polypropylene, you can use that. But when you're choosing anything um, for that layer, the one that people generally go to, the two that generally people go to, is either fleece or wool. And those are the ones that are going to give you that wicking ability to get that moisture to move to your outer layer, and it's going to give you the ability to stay warm. Now, you can use a light jacket or nylon shirt. Um, they do make nylon jackets that have a fleece inner lining. Um, some of them even have a combination of fleece and maybe a polypropylene or something like that. Um, you can also use a shirt, uh, a fleece shirt or a fleece jacket. I have a fleece jacket here um, that has no hood, but I do have fleece long johns. <laughs> and when you're looking for long johns, um, Again, you want to avoid cotton or cotton blends for this lining, and you want to avoid denim. I know people think they can put on a pair of denim jeans and they're good to go, but let me tell you, they get wet, they get heavy, and they don't dry. But this is a pair by a company called Climate Right. They have, <clears throat> these things are so nice and warm. And when you're out and you're choosing fleece, there are a couple things you want to consider about fleece. Fleece, number one, stays warm even when it's wet. It dries extremely fast. And the reason that it does that is because fleece is very breathable. There are three different weights to fleece. There's a lightweight, which is labeled either lightweight or 100. There's a midweight, which is a 200. And then there's a heavyweight, which is 300. The 300 is thick. 
It is very thick. It's for like Arctic temperatures um, or for Iceland or, you know, you're going to be in a very cold environment for a long period of time. This is a mid-weight. And the reason I chose mid-weight is because I wanted a thin base layer, but a nice warm mid layer. And it's by a company called Climate Right. They do have all three of these layers. Again, I got this at Walmart. I paid $70 for my base layer. I paid $85 for my fleece layer. And I am all about making sure that I'm dressed properly, but within a budget. You don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on these products to make sure that you're warm. You just need to make sure that they're made of the correct material. And this is polyester spandex fleece. And it is extremely warm. I love these things. And if you can combine your material with spandex, that's going to help you a bit, a lot more than just a bit, because you don't want anything tight on your skin. Your base layer and your mid layer need to be comfortable, functional, but not skin tight. That's important because the air that's in between the layers is what's going to keep you warm. That's why wicking that moisture is so important is because the trapped air in between those layers is what's actually keeping you warm. And air is an excellent insulator. So you can choose fleece. Now, the downside of fleece and the one thing that is really, really, really important is this is not wind resistant. They do make wind resistant fleece, but you're going to pay a lot of money for that. And unfortunately, that's something that a lot of people don't have access to is a lot of money. But fleece is very open and weave. The weave is very open, so it's not wind resistant at all. So fleece is one of the main things that people choose for their mid layer, unless they choose a merino wool sweater or something that has that type of wool inside of it because that will definitely wick the moisture into your outer layer and also keep you warm. Now this is also usable for your mid layer and this is a polyester, um, I think it's polyester and nylon, actually it's fleece, but it has polyester in it as well. But this is a sweatshirt and you've seen me wear this before. My last video I wore this under my green down coat and it is very, very warm, very breathable. I actually at one point had to take my coat off <laughs> because it made me warm. But you can choose a fleece hooded sweatshirt if you can find them. And they work very, very well. Just make sure there's no cotton in them. And this will serve you very well for your mid layer. When it comes to um, also choosing a material, there's also a material out there, a lot of shirts, a lot of sweatshirts, a lot of jackets have, it's called Thinsulate, and it's polyolefin. And it is a material that is very breathable, but also extremely insulating. And it's very popular here in the United States. I'm not sure if it is in other countries. It's by a company called 3M, and it's in all kinds of stuff. I have hats, my shoes, my, my boots have it in it. But you can also do that, and it's a lot more cost effective. You can also choose a down, a goose down or a duck down coat to place over your base layer or over a piece of fleece. But there's one thing that you want to make sure of when, when you come to your down, and that is down coats, down jackets, have what they call fill power rating. And that fill power rating can go from 450 to 900. And that's just the ability for that fill to warm you. And it's insulating value is basically what that is. The higher the value, the more warmth you're going to have from the coat. The one thing about down is, is when it gets wet, it loses its insulating power altogether. If you're going to choose a down coat, make sure you choose one that is wind and water resistant or wind and water proof. That way it doesn't get into your down and get you cold because it will lose that. My Columbia coat that I have, um, I got lucky and found this. This is a $250 coat I found for $20 on clearance uh, three winters ago. It is a 860 fill power. And 
it has the Omni Heat. It's by Columbia. It has the Omni Heat on the inside. Now this Omni Heat thing that Columbia has is amazing. It basically takes your body heat once it, it has no moisture because it wicks it off in your other layers and it literally pops it back onto your body. But I'll go over that in more detail in the outer layer. Um, but you can use a light down coat. This is duck down. Um, this is made with duck and it is a very lightweight jacket but let me tell you this will burn you out it is very very warm it has a nylon outer shell it is not water resistant it is not waterproof so this would make a great mid layer um, but like I said <laughs> this will definitely roast you out the other thing about down that people need to know about is if you take your down coat off and you do this with it and you stuff it in a dry sack or you stuff it in your camera bag or in a backpack and you leave it there for a long period of time, you're actually harming your coat. You're destroying the microfibers and the microns inside the down feathers and they lose their ability to insulate. You actually damage your jacket. So be careful of that whenever you're packing it away. That is an excellent, excellent tip. I did not know that. Now. Your mid layer, you're talking your thermal underwear, you're talking fleece, merino wool, goose down, or any type of down, goose, duck are generally the two most popular things, but making sure that it is water resistant if you're going to choose a goose. So now we move to our outer layer. And our outer layer is a jacket or a parka or pants or anything that is windproof, waterproof, snowproof, and made of a material that will protect the other layers that are inside, but also be breathable. The number one material for that on the market today is called Gore-Tex. And Gore-Tex is amazing stuff, but it's very expensive. And to find anything within a budget for Gore-Tex is going to be very difficult. I found a pair of pants over at Cabela's that I loved. They fit me great. They fit over my other pants, but they were $263 for one pair of pants. And I am not doing that. <laughs> so I choose to go a different route. And these are made by North Face. They're called the Aphrodite Pant. I use these for hiking in the fall and in the spring. And I have the exact same pant and Capri pants for summer. But they are treated with DWR, which is water resistant. Water will get on these pants and they literally bead and fall off. The more, even if I wash it, it doesn't matter. It's still on here. It is embedded in the materials. And these are breathable, um, poly, I think they're polyester material. Um, I think that's what they are. Oh, I can't even see the tag. I'm blind as a bat. Yeah, the tag doesn't tell me what they are. Yeah, it doesn't tell me what they are. But they come highly recommended by a friend of mine, and I purchased a few pairs, and I absolutely love these things. So these are my water resistant, but they're not wind resistant. I, I have a pair of um, rain pants and wind pants that are coming to me. I ordered them, and they're coming from China. Did not know they were going to be coming from China. I hope to God they fit, um, but they're not here yet, so I can't show you those. But I can show you my snow pants. This is a pair of snow overalls. They're literally a pair of overalls, and they are wind resistant, water resistant. They are fleece lined, so um, well, I can't get down in there. But they are nylon over fleece so that it protects the fleece on the inside in case anything gets up in there. And this is what I would use when I'm going out in any type of heavy snowfall or any type of snowfall at all. And this would be my outer shell. I would use this with my gray coat. My gray coat is wind and water resistant. It is treated, but I really, I've gotten this thing soaking wet and it's not gotten through at all. And I love this coat. The Omni heat option on the inside is great because what that does is it takes any body heat that you have and pumps it back. It keeps in the coat. It doesn't go through the materials. It keeps it on you. It's like putting aluminum foil on, basically is what it is. I have gloves that have it, um, and it's 
it's awesome. But your outer layer needs to be able to keep you dry, keep the wind from getting through your clothes. And like I said with fleece, fleece is not wind resistant whatsoever unless you purchase the wind resistant type of fleece which is combined with another material and those are very, very expensive. Um, now, you can also do a rain suit. I know a gentleman who wears his layers but then he has like a specific type of rain suit over everything and that will work as well too. You don't need to go out and buy re water resistant pants, rain pants, anything like that. You can actually use a regular raincoat and rain pants. Um, that works very well also if you're on a budget and those aren't too expensive so that makes it a little bit easier. Um, <clears throat> now we've gone through your base layer we've gone through your mid layer or your insulating layer and now we've gone through the outer layer which is your wind and rain and snow protection that will keep that moisture out of your clothes but breathable enough to allow the moisture from your other two layers to escape while keeping you warm. There's also another product I want to talk about which is called a soft shell jacket and those are very nice because they're a jacket and they also have soft shell pants that combines everything all into one. I'm not talking all three layers, I'm talking about your rain and your wind resistance all in one product, but it also has an insulating factor. And that can be very important if you're going out and you don't have all of your base layers or anything with you, that can help. It's not perfect, but it can help. So you might want, you can consider that as well. Now, here's the kicker. I showed you what I use, but I didn't show it on me. I'm not that brave. However, I got a hold of a photographer by the name of Thomas Heaton. I'm sure you guys have heard of him. He's, he's a very popular and very well-known photographer in the UK, and he made a video showing you exactly how to use all of the things that I just talked about in a video in Iceland. And with his permission, I'm gonna link that video above, here or here, I'm not sure where and you guys can see exactly what it looks like to layer your clothing. So go and check out his video. It's awesome. I can't believe he did it in the middle of Iceland, but he did. And that's it. If you have any questions or anything, let me know in the comments. If you yourself have any tips or tricks or anything that you've used to prepare yourself for winter photography, please let us know down below in the comments because it's all about sharing and a lot of people have a different ways of doing things. So please let us know. If you like this video, click the like button. If you don't, that's fine. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon because I've got some really cool stuff coming up hopefully as soon as we get some snow. Yo, Mother Nature, where's the snow? And I will see you guys later. Take it easy, bye.